Hello, this is Johan Vermilo with Mobility Minded and today is we're going to do our part 2 of the review of the Samsung Omnia 2 from Verizon. Um, as you can see I have them laying right next to uh, the older Samsung Omnia, the first model. Um, so you can kind of see the comparison and the iPhone on the other end. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to look a little bit more in the user interface of the Omnia 2. Uh, which we have actually two, three, um, actually I added a fourth option in there. Um, so let's go through that real quick and let's take a look at that. Okay, here we go. Okay, to turn it on, uh, the device, um, you have to press the start button or the, the, the end call button and then you see that this is the, the lock screen of the Omnia 2. Uh, just tapping it, you will see that the SmartWiz user interface will be right here where if you have a notification uh, a, a small bar will pop up on the bottom telling you you have either a text message email a missed call or any voicemails uh, looking at the sliding panels these are the widgets that that come with it uh, that you can actually just really easy drag and drop on top uh, for example I can remove this one and I can add this one right here um, so you can see that the witches are there however the witches are very limited so if you have any programs that you have installed for example your favorite twitter clients and you would like to have that as a widget up here it's not there so that there's a little limitation right there but uh... the most functionals are there for example having your uh, wireless control um, and again this has a sliding panel up to three pages so you can change the background per page so that's pretty ideal so um, SmartWiz, uh, what happens with the SmartWiz 2 when you hit the start menu instead of getting the honeycomb structure that Windows Mobile 6.5 has it actually comes with its own menu structure uh, it's really easy to organize these for example I can hit the edit button and I say okay I want this one removed and if I want to add another one, then I can go back to others, etc., and it will add it back in. You hit the save button, and everything is there. So the sliding panels are looks like it's unlimited. The nice thing about the home screen and this menu sliding panel is, even if you re reach the last sliding panel, if you keep going in the same direction, it will go back to the first uh, screen of your menu or your home screen. Another nice thing is the task switcher. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's also with nice uh, panels that you can move. So any open program that you have, you'll be able to go really quickly to, uh, to that with this task switcher. You also can click on tiles and then you actually get the tile view instead. Hit end or end all. Uh, a bad thing, a bad thing, a little bit hard for this main menu is if you install a new program it does not automatically come in the menu structure so you actually have to go to your one of your sliding panels where you still have an open spot if you have one and you hit add it and you click on the plus to take a real good look okay this is what I want as you can see here actually I added also SBB mobile shell 3.5 on this device uh, and the reason why I did that is just to um, to to show you what the possibility is uh, with that so let's go to SBB home um, and here you can see that the widgets that I hear are much more extensive and they're all built into Windows Mobile Shell or the SPB Mobile Shell 3.5 sliding panels as well with up to five uh, sliding panels in what they call the lifestyle view uh, and if you go to the carousel you can actually go if you have it set up the professional view the professional view will only have uh, three sliding panels so it's a huge difference um, the launcher will be more your your menu structure so you go to your menu instead of the home um, you can hit programs and then you actually see them all and again uh, Windows Mobile 6.5 has the honeycomb structure, but you both see here in SPB Mobile Shell and the Samsung SmartWiz that they go back just in a regular rectangle menu structure. Uh, as long as the icons are big enough, um, I don't think there's an issue with that. Um, 
So uh, let me go back to the home screen. Um, unfortunately, on the right bottom, I had the cube um, launcher there as well, which is also the user interface uh, that they um, have included with the Samsung Omnia 2. Um, but since I installed SBB uh, Mobile Shell, that soft button uh, disappeared. So I actually had to add that. Uh, go into actually my Windows uh, um, file manager to find it there and actually created a new shortcut. But this will be the the cube uh, version of um, a user interface that comes with it. So there are different ways where you can actually check real quick. Uh, you know, it looks like this is the games. Uh, I, I, I'm not not happy about it yet, but you know, you can actually kind of see really quick and you end up right there at the program. So it is kind of a way of, of quickly getting to your program structure too. So you have your music. So instead of using um, the cube and, and moving it around, you actually have a couple of quick buttons on the bottom where you can actually uh, take a look at that. So you have your videos, you have your library. So it's a quick menu structure uh, as well for, for some access. I'm not sure if I'm happy with this yet. Um, to turn off the SmartWiz um, on on this device uh, took some took some working with it. So if you go to the settings, um, you can see that a lot of settings are in a different team with the SmartWiz team from Samsung. I tried to get out of that, which is it's kind of I have to say kind of hard. Um, let's take a look. I think it's in the general settings where, yes, the Samsung TouchWiz. Here I can disable the TouchWiz UI. However, that does not switch everything. So what it does is that, I believe now, now I can see the honeycomb structure. But to tell you the truth, not everything is gone. Um, when I go to settings in here, uh, let me go I didn't see it. That's the bad thing, of course. Uh, a quick tip for you guys: if you press and hold the honeycomb and you hit move to top, then uh, you get things uh, actually on the top right now. So settings. Take a look at the settings, and you see the SmartWiz UI is still there. There is a way, though, uh, but again, that's only with um, SPB Home. Is when you use the settings over here. If I go to settings over here, and here I go to my system settings, and I go to, um, let me take a look at the memory, for example, I get the official Windows Mobile 6.5 screen. If I go back and I go use the start menu settings, and I go to memory settings right here, you will see that main storage, it actually gives you that different UI. So, I haven't figured out yet how to disable all of the SmartWiz UI uh, to have a, a standard Windows Mobile 6.5 device where you can customize it yourself. Uh, but Windows uh, of SPB Mobile Shell 3.5 will allow you. Okay, right now what we'll show you is actually the different user interfaces in the regular Windows 6.5. Uh, standard user interface and what comes with the Samsung. Looking on the top I have contacts here, my contacts here, calendar and my calendar. So anything that says my in front of it is actually done by the user interface of Samsung. So let's take a look at that one. Now everybody knows this one. It's, 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 you know, we are pretty close to that. But if you look at the my contacts for this Samsung you see there's a whole different settings right here. So uh, yeah, let me just exit down that. Uh, same with the calendar. Looking at it, you have the standard Windows calendar, right? And then my calendar, you'll have the Samsung. So this will go through a couple of the applications, not all of them. Um, two different browsers come with it, Opera and Internet Explorer. And that would be probably it. Yep, the mail settings is pretty much similar. So um, that's all taken care of. Uh, another quick tip. Uh, which is nice. On the side of the phone you have a small lock button which um, on the previous Amiya was just a power button on the top where you just hit it once and it actually turns off the device and puts it in the lock mode. So this was Johan Vermilo with uh, Mobility Minded. Uh, just went over some UI differences and UI possibilities. 
on the Samsung Omnia 2 from Verizon. Take care.